<laughs> so good morning, everyone. Welcome to good the morning. <laughs> welcome to I keep wanting to say it's July, but it's June, June technical meeting of the Ulster County Transportation Council. Do we just want to take a roll so we know who's in the waiting room? Um, yeah, I can run down through everyone on the participant list. Thank you, Dave. We have Alex Wade, Amy McKenzie, John Schulteis, Martin Hall, Chris Hannett, Harriet Lewis, Herb Litz, Shelly Johnson, Johnston, uh, a phone number ending in 4080, and then C Spec, who I'm not too sure who that one is. So with the phone number, please identify themselves. Or not. Thank you, Dave. Welcome. Call for citizens comments. Any citizens comments? Hey, Dennis, it's, in, uh, it's Fred Costello. I'm the 4080. Uh, thank you. Good morning. Okay. Sir. Thanks for joining us. Um, approval of the no citizens comments. Approval of the March 22nd, 2022 technical committee meeting summary. Do I have a motion for discussion purposes? Mr. Pine made the motion. Do I have a second? Somebody on the on the on the Zoom call, please. John Schulteis. Thank you, Mr. Schulteis. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? Let me do it that way. I have so many on Zoom. Any opposed? <laughs> Any abstentions? So carried. Communications and announcements. Um, before we start the communications and announcements, Fred, are you still there? Fred Castell? Fred? I know you're still there, Fred. Before we start that, I just wanted to uh, take a moment of silence. Uh, a dear friend of ours uh, and a dedicated public servant, author, uh, and all around great uh, festival, uh, Vernon Benjamin from the town of Saugerty. So if we would take a moment of silence. Thank you. It seems odd to have this meeting and not have Vern here. Uh, yeah, it does. Is, is Fred there? Fred, would you like to say anything about Fred? Uh, yeah, about thanks for the opportunity, Dennis. Uh, Vernon has met so much to Sargis and to Ulster County more broadly. Uh, he served as town supervisor. He served as a legislator. And he was a dedicated advocate for this organization on behalf of the town during my tenure as supervisor. And, uh, you know, his, his perspective and expertise will be missed. Obviously his friendship will be missed more. And he was really a noted author. He's uh, credited with writing two volumes of the history of the Hudson Valley. And that has become the recognized academic text for folks that are studying that. And uh, for those of us who live there, it is really an interesting read and it helps give perspective about where we are today and how we got here. So uh, I appreciate the opportunity to remember him a little bit and uh, share some of what he meant to all of us. Thanks, Fred. Thank you. Okay, moving on, communications and announcements, Brian. <clears throat> uh, I'd just like to announce that uh, the New York State DOT and the Governor of New York announced on Friday the Transportation Alternatives Program awardees. And uh, that list is available through the Governor's uh, press uh, webpage. And uh, a notable uh, award in Ulster County was for the um, phase one section of the Shandaken UMD uh, proposed rail trail. That would be in the town of Shandaken. 
that would run from uh, County Route 42A, Galley Kirchy Road, uh, 2.5 miles south to the Bel Air day use area along the former UND rail line. So that is a total project cost of, I believe it's $4.9 million. The award is 80% of that, somewhere in the vicinity of $3.9 million. Um, so um, congratulations to the <laughs> County of Ulster. And we look forward to seeing uh, great progress on that project in the months to come. So I, if I could just add a couple of things. One is, is that one of the reasons that this project was successful is the Ulster County Transportation Council uh, did the feasibility study. So a lot of the background for this, um, for the application uh, came from the Transportation Council's work. And I would be remiss if we didn't mention the fact that um, our dear friend and, and colleague, Brian Slack, uh, wrote that grant. So congratulations to Brian for being successful. Yeah, and I had assistance from Chris Hannett, who's on the uh, meeting today as well, remotely from Bart, Barton and LeJudas. And also our former deputy, Chris White, really set things in motion uh, with the study and getting us set on the right track, no pun intended. So um, again, the awardee is the Ulster County Planning Department. So I look forward to assisting them as they manage this project to a successful completion. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> and looking forward to visiting that too. Any other communications and announcements? Um, the 50, section 5310 award process is still ongoing. I don't believe there's anyone on the call who had applied, but this is a, um, a, 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 a the FTA section 5310 program is for people, elderly and people with disabilities to provide enhanced um, transportation services to them. And there were two applicants from within Ulster County uh, applying for those access to those funds. So those awards are currently being reviewed and we would expect an announcement within the next several weeks that announcement will come from the New York State DOT. Yeah, the two were Rufco and uh, ARC, is that correct? That's correct, yeah. yep. Any questions about that? I can't think of any further communications and announcements at this point. Thank you, Brian. Any communications or announcements from the Transportation Council members? Hearing none, new business number five on the agenda, draft item A, draft UCTC resolution 2022-04, Amendment to the UCTC Federal Fiscal Year 2020-2024 Transportation Improvement Program to amend the Town of Lloyd PIN number 875781 as shown in attachment one. Do I have a motion for discussion purposes? Mr. Litz, I'm looking at you. Trying to unmute. I, I would love to make a motion, but I'm not a member. It's not Officially. necessary for the technical committee. You don't have to be to be on a technical committee. You can. Make oh, then I'll, I'll gladly make that motion. I figured you would. Thank you. Do I have a second? second. Mr. Pine, thank you very much. I have a motion and second. Brian? Yes, this um, amendment was requested by the town of Lloyd um, and their consultants um, to add additional funds to PIN 875781. This is for the Tilson Ave safety alignment work um, in the uh, town and hamlet of Highland. Uh, the project has been in design for many years now, and they're very close to the finish line. In an effort to uh, progress the project earlier in the year, the consultants uh, released um, for bid the project, and bids came in well above the amount of money that was programmed on the transportation improvement program. So uh, in consultation with our partners at New York State DOT, Ulster County was able to identify an offset from a county PIN 805111. This PIN was rolled into uh, federal fiscal year 24. And therefore those funds, it was previously in this current federal fiscal year. So those funds could be made available as offset. Um, that would be the ST. BG flex portion of the um, offset, which is, I believe it's roughly um, $2 million total 
um, increase, a little more than 2 million. In addition, they also required additional funds for detailed design. Now, I will say I've been working closely with uh, New York State DOT staff, Nicole Farmer, who's been um, extremely helpful in processing this amendment. Um, the amendment details may change somewhat as we move forward um, in the next several days. Uh, we had to discuss this with Bill Hebert at um, uh, Albany Cent Central Office. There may be a slight change in the way the phases are shown on the new portion of the tip, but the final project cost should remain the same. And the overall project cost by phase when combined will remain the same. So essentially what I think has happened here is that construction has already been obligated uh, because it was put out to bid. So we will just need to add an additional construction phase to cover the cost overage. Um, we'll have those details clarified by the time we advertise for public notice next week. Um, because the amount in the amendment is over uh, $500,000, it does require a full amendment, including public notice and policy approval. Do we have any public notice yet or not? No, we, we need technical committee approval before we issue public notice. Okay. Any questions from the council members? I thought you did a second project that you were going to do something we do and that is for the kingston rail trail and that is less than five hundred oh, thousand. Okay. so it doesn't have to go through a full amendment thank yeah. you so, so just that's for those on the phone that may not have on the zoom that may not have heard the question was was there a second project and we'll explain that um so i have a motion and a second no additional discussion on the zoom call anyone opposed Any abstentions? Anyone opposed here? Any abstentions? So carried. Thank you. I want to record note that Mike Todd has joined us from the town of Rochester. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. Item B, draft UCTC resolution 2022-05. Amendment to the UCTC Federal Fiscal Year 2020-2024 Transportation Improvement Program to add a new Ulster County Area Transit pin, actually pins, 8TU-011 and 8TU-012 as shown in attachment one. Do I have a motion for discussion purposes? So moved by Baden. Mr. Baden has moved it. Do I have a second? Second. Is that Mr. Litz? Yes. Thank you. I have a motion and a second, Brian. Yes, these uh, two projects are part of UCAT's um, 2022 plan of projects that they are submitting a FTA grant application for that will use funding that has been allocated to UCAT for these purposes. Um, the two projects are listed separately. One is for rolling stock. It would be for the purchase of two 35-foot battery electric buses for the UCAT fleet. And the second is for um, fleet support vehicles. These uh, would be essentially staff vehicles uh, to support um, UCAT operations. Um, two funding sources are combined. FTA 5307 and FTA 5339 funds. These are funds previously allocated. And I should also note the FTA 5339 funds are from 2018 and may be lapsing. So they do need to be used during this fiscal year. Um, the projects are being added to the current 2020, 2020 tip and will need to be shown in federal fiscal year 22 as part of their team's grant, TRAMS grant, which stands for transit. Boy, I you caught myself on that one, <laughs> didn't I? I don't know what it stands for, but it's the FTA uh, grant software that uh, designated recipients use to enter their program projects. Thank you, Brian. Any questions from the council members? Hearing none, any opposed?
Any abstentions? Hearing none, so carried. Thank you. Item C, draft UCTC resolution 2022-106, distribution of federal transit funding from the American Rescue Plan Act, ARPA, to the Mid-Hudson Valley Transportation Management Area. I have a motion for discussion purposes. So moved by David. Do I have a second? I'll second that, Herblitz. I have a motion and a second. Brian? <clears throat> Yes, as the agenda indicates, um, this uh, slate of fun FTA funding is from Federal Fiscal Year 21 American Rescue Plan Act Supplemental Public Transportation Apportionments and Allocations. Um, over $30 billion was made nationwide uh, in supplemental appropriations to support transit during the COVID public health emergency. Um, during the interim from when the Funds were released. New York State DOT, in association with the Mid Hudson Valley Transportation Management Area members, have been discussing the formula for distributing the allocation made available to the Poughkeepsie, Newburgh, New York, New Jersey urbanized area. <coughs> Distribution is shown in attachment one of the resolution. The full allocation is over $66 million in FTA 5307 funds that would be made available to uh, the public operators within the TMA, which include Dutchess, Orange, and Ulster counties, as well as the Metropolitan Transportation Authority and New Jersey. Um, so the dis distribution formula is shown for the public operators. And as agreed to, this distribution would have as unallocated for uh, future TMA programming over $28 million, which would go into savings for competitive distribution at a future point in time. Uh, these funds, because they are ARPA funds, require no local match. And they are one can be used 100% federal <clears throat> for operations or capital. So just a, just some uh, quick additional points. One is is that this um, allocation methodology is a departure from the TMA from its normal its normal allocation methodology, which is based on preventive maintenance needs uh, and NTD what they call National Transit Database. Finally, uh, this allocation uh, was used by the uh, Region One UZA One um, in terms of deciding to move this out based on operating costs. So when you look at operating costs uh, and you move the money out in that allocation formula, uh, the Metropolitan Transit Transportation Authority gets a lion's share of this funding. Um, the reason that there is uh, approximately $28 million remaining is, is that there are three private commuter service bus lines uh, in the region uh, that would be eligible for distribution under an allocation process. Uh, and there are substantial amounts of money involved in that, including uh, money to Shortline or Coach USA, money to, is it Mid-Hudson Bus across the way on the other side? I can't remember sure. the name of the bus company on the other side and Trailways. Um, we do not have a lot of clarity on where these current carriers are in terms of their use of the initial distribution of CARES Act money, uh, in which these carriers received a substantial amount of funding. So the decision was to set that money aside and look for additional clarity on their part in terms of uh, what that distribution would be. Um, and we hope that what ends up happening is, is that the this type of funding that's left over is utilized with similar care uh, that the communities and counties have used with respect to their own ARPA funds, and they're and they're provided to make a difference in the transportation system, in the transit system, rather than simply subsidize uh, existing existing route structures and and the existing transit system. So that's why the the decision at the TMA level was made to to hold that money back and to await additional clarification on needs and, and also uh, innovation. Any questions? 
Hearing none, any opposed? Any abstentions? So carried. Item D, draft UCTC resolution number 2022-07, distribution of federal transit funds from the Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriation Act, otherwise known as CERISA, in the Mid-Hudson Valley Transportation Management Area. Brian? Oh, no, I need a motion for discussion purposes. So moved, Mike Baden. I have a motion from Mr. Baden. Do I have a second? Second, Herb Litz. Thank you, Mr. Litz, but I got Mr. Pine sitting in the room with me. I have a motion second from Mr. Baden and Mr. Pine. Brian. This, this is um, very similar funding source uh, that has been appropriated and distributed in a very similar fashion as the uh, ARPA funds. However, the Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriations Act was originally made in 2021. Um, late in December 2020, actually, and includes $900 billion in supplemental appropriations for COVID-19 relief, $14 billion of which was allocated to support transit industry during the COVID-19 pandemic. Under Attachment 1, you'll note the total amount of CORISA funds made available is just <coughs> over $4 million. And again, by formula, the distribution is shown for the public operators with 79 thousand eight hundred forty five dollars being made available to Ulster County um, and in similar fashion 1.7 million will be made available for future programming on a competitive basis as unallocated funds. Any comments discussion. Hearing none any opposed. Any abstentions? So carried, thank you. The first time I think we've been to E in a while, haven't we? Yeah. yeah. And in less than 30 minutes. There we go. <laughs> Item E, um, UCTC resolution 2022-08, adoption of the Ulster County Transportation Council Federal Fiscal Year 2023-2027 Transportation Improvement Program. Do I have a motion for discussion purposes? So moved, Mike Baden. I have a motion for Mr. Baden. Do I okay. have a second? Herb Litz. Thank you, Mr. Litz. I have a motion and a second. Brian, we have a presentation, do we not? Yeah, we do. We have a presentation. Dave's going to bring that up. So um, do you think I could control of course. The, the space bar? Yeah. Um, so thanks everyone. This is the typical dog and pony show we have with the um, update of the transportation improvement program. And I'm gonna run through a um, series of slides and information regarding the development of the program um, at the end of the presentation. If you happen to have questions, um, please let me know. So some of this material is gonna be pretty familiar to everyone. This is essentially my um, practice presentation for the public presentation that will be held later in July. So please bear with me. Um, I know a lot of you are pretty seasoned uh, with this stuff, but of course, uh, UCTC is the MPO for the Kingston Urbanized Area and part of the Mid-Hudson Valley TMA, established by an act of the governor of New York in 2003 and responsible for the continuing cooperative and collaborative transportation planning process. And that is a quote uh, notarized in the um, federal law. Uh, council is consensus-based decision-making body and made up of the highest elected officials from across Ulster County. MPOs in the United States have three primary responsibilities. Development of the long range transportation plan development of the Unified Planning Work Program, and development of the Transportation Improvement Program, the TIP, which is the capital component of uh, the metropolitan planning process. 
It's the five-year capital program for federally funded transportation projects, which are sourced from the US DOT, Federal Highway Administration, and Federal Transit Administration. And it's typically updated every two to three years. It must be fiscally constrained, which we will explain in further detail in just a moment. But it essentially means that we have to have proof that the projects listed on the Transportation Improvement Program are tied to fiscal targets. And then once the TIPs are developed from across all the 14 MPOs in New York State, they're combined with the rural programs in areas that are not covered by an MPO and compiled, essentially rolled, rolled up to create one comprehensive state transportation improvement program, the STIP. So the STIP is essentially a compilation of all the TIPs from across New York State. All TIPs must be done in close coordination with New York State DOT and any public transit providers within the urbanized area or planning area. So the TIP includes, as I mentioned, all FHWA and FTA funding program in Ulster County, as well as any necessary state and local matches. There are typically four main components of uh, the project listings. There's the traditional highway bridge and mobility projects, mobility meaning bike and ped projects for the most part, transit projects, as well as multi-county maintenance projects, which are almost exclusively New York State DOT projects from region eight in our case. And then traditionally, we also have the New York State Thruway Authority and New York State Bridge Authority projects that utilize federal funds. This year is somewhat unusual, however, in that those uh, two agencies or authorities rather are using 100% state funds for their projects. And therefore there are no Thruway Authority or Bridge Authority projects listed on the 2023 TIP at this time. So getting into some of the details of this new update, the draft 2023 iteration programs over a 130 million in federal funds for roads, bridges, maintenance, and bike, ped, and transit projects in Ulster County and Mid-Hudson South over the 2023-2027 five-year program period. I should note and stress that as the TIP is being developed, this is essentially a moving target and there's quite a bit of fine tuning going on so some of these numbers that I'm going to present to you are in some cases estimates and may change somewhat over the course of the next several weeks. Um, but it also, in addition to the 139 million, just a simple calculation indicates that the, it requires an additional 20% match to those federal funds. Some of that formulary varies by program source, but there would be an additional 34 million in required matches to that 139 million. The TIP document is also required to include a narrative called the anticipated effects narrative, which explains how all the projects within the TIP help to meet state and local performance management goals. And there is in this iteration of the TIP an eight to 10 page narrative section that explains how the UCTC projects meet those goals. Um, so how do we embark upon the TIP update process? It is a pretty heavy lift for all NPOs, big and small, and especially the New York State DOT. So the process typically begins with New York State DOT essentially firing the, the starting pistol, um, and they circulate what are called fiscal targets and instructions. Uh, this year, those were circulated in March 2022 which was the latest that they've been circulated in quite some time. And there's a variety of reasons because of that um, that we'll explain in a moment. UCTC staff then begin to look at the projects that are currently programmed on the existing TIP that are scheduled for obligation during the updated TIP period and compare those projects with the fiscal targets that were provided. And then we begin to um, prepare recommendations to the technical committee. The focus from the MPO's perspective is primarily on the local Federal Highway Administration projects and the transit programs. Um, the Federal Highway Administration projects are often referred to as the core program. And then draft this year, draft recommendations were delivered to the policy committee back in May 2022, 
when I provide a detailed overview of the recommendations that are now included in this tip. And we did receive consensus at that point in May. And then once we receive that consensus, it's up to UCTC staff and NISDOT staff to then continue this dance over the course of the past several weeks to fine tune the program and figure out exactly how we can make sure we have a fiscally constrained program that meets with everyone's project schedules and stays within the confines of our fiscal targets that are provided to us. And I wanna emphasize, as I already have, um, the gratitude that I have to NISDOT staff, particularly Nicole Farmer, who has been fielding all of our requests in a very timely manner. We really appreciate her assistance this year. As I mentioned, this was somewhat of an unusual tip update period because as you, I think everyone knows, back in November, we have the historic bipartisan infrastructure law um, that was passed. Um, this um, the, is essentially the new five-year Surface Transportation Authorization Act and that will provide FHWA and FTA funding uh, through September 30th, 2026, which is the tip, new TIP period. And as you probably heard, it makes it a once in a generation investment of $350 billion nationally for highway programs, which I believe is a roughly 40% increase from the previous uh, Transportation Authorization Act. It's the largest dedicated bridge investment since the construction of the interstate highway system. The bill includes um, the following major emphasis areas that in include an in increase in federal funds, but that was primarily limited to two primary program sources, the Supplemental Bridge Formula Program and the National Highway Performance Program. Otherwise, the increases or growth in the Authorization Act are primary, primarily focused on what we often refer to as discretionary programs. Those are programs that states and in some instances municipalities can apply for at their own discretion. And the rules for those funding sources are dictated under the, they're essentially developed for each different program. Some of the focus areas that Bill, uh, the infra bipartisan infrastructure law have included this year will uh, be carbon reduction, um, safety, including um, crash reduction and safe systems approaches, uh, transportation resiliency, uh, in improving the resiliency of the transportation infrastructure, particularly bridges and highways, and also transportation enhancements, such as the transportation alternatives program and development of complete street solutions. Some of those programs have already been announced. More programs will be announced over the course of the five-year authorization act. And as I mentioned, some of the rules have not even been <coughs> drafted at this point in time. So while the bipartisan infrastructure was completed in November, essentially New York State DOT didn't have the time or the uh, ability to pull those increases entirely into our new fiscal targets. So the federal and state shares are not yet adjusted uh, based on the New York State uh, executive budget or the infrastructure law. Um, the executive budget is worth noting, it does achieve a 40% federal share within the highway capital plan, but the local targets that we use to develop this tip were essentially held flat plus a substantial roll-in from the previous tip. And I will explain what that means in just a moment. Um, typically, when we receive our target, we see compared to what is programmed. And if there are any additional funds, we can make those funds available for new project proposals on our tip. But 100% of our uh, target and roll-in went to existing projects. Therefore, we are unable to do a call for new projects for the highway system. However, one additional bridge was added to the program. That's the Scudderbrook Bridge. That bridge was applied for under the previous TIP call for projects. It essentially was already awarded and earmarked, for lack of a better word. And so that bridge was added during this TIP update cycle 
Um, I believe we actually processed the amendment or are about to process the amendment. So uh, at this time, there's no call for new projects for this TIP uh, update. So <clears throat> this presentation essentially is following the outline that is the narrative of the TIP document. I think I have the link to the document at the end of the presentation. I hope I do anyway. Um, and I'm referring to fiscal targets. This is the same sheet that was provided to us in March. It's in Appendix C of the document. And just to highlight what targets that we were using to develop this program, there's two primarily primary funding sources that were made available to Ulster County Transportation Council. That's the STBG Flex program, which as its name implies, can be used for a variety of highway uh, projects. We have over $7 million of rolling. Those are projects that are currently programmed on the existing TIP that will have phases um, rolling into the new program period from 2023 and 2024. And then we have a target of essentially $1 million per year. Um, and we, in working with NISDOT, essentially have asked and requested uh, permission to lump the majority of that five-year target into the first two years of the TIP because that's where all of our projects are landing. The existing projects are primarily going to obligation for construction in fiscal years 23 and 24. These are primarily legacy projects that have been in design for many years now. And I'll list those projects in a moment. And then we have the STBG off-system bridge program. And again, the targets are shown here. And the majority of these um, uh, funds, again, are going toward existing projects already programmed. So the core program is shown here. This includes state and local projects that in Ulster County in the next several years. And it shows the distribution across um, federal uh, fiscal programs. So STBG Flex, STBG Off System Bridge, all of these different programs are explained in detail in the TIP narrative document. It also explains the FTA sources. Um, so it's a total of federal funds, 37.5 million in FHWA for the local program and 33.1 million in FTA funds. That doesn't include the does it? it does not. No. And I, I've got a slide on that. Oh, just okay. now. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, here are the projects. Uh, each tip is required to have a map showing the location of every project. This is shown in detail. So the table has a map reference number. There's the project pin, project name, and the municipality in which the project is located. You'll have to go to the specific project um, tables to see who the project sponsor is. In other words, the municipality who's res responsible for managing the project. In some instances, these are county projects managed within other municipalities. The pro I should also note that the listing has steadily been decreasing over time as we move these projects to obligation. So what kind of projects are we talking about? Well, there's mobility. This shows the distribution of the projects by dollar amount, and that's federal dollars only. So for mobility projects, there's the 209 Sidewalks Project in Kerhonkson. That's a town of Warsing project. The DNH Rail Trail in the Warsing as well. Flatbush and Fox Hall Sidewalks, Highland Streetscape Project. Those two are TAP projects. Um, Henry W. Du Bois Project in New Paltz. That's a TAP project. New York State DOT is uh, designing a Route 28 pedestrian path in the um, town of um, or in the hamlet of Antiora, and also County Route 7 and 8, shoulder widening in towns of New Paltz and Gardner. That's uh, at this point, a, I believe that's upwards of a $7 million project. So a significant amount of funding for mobility. Bridge projects, the majority of these are county bridges um, with a significant investment on Route 212 by New York State DOT in the town of Woodstock. Um, but also uh, the village of Ellenville, Clinton Ave Bridge, and the Boyce Mill Bridge in the town of Rochester. Then there's one safety project. 
and that is the signal installation in the town of Gardner at the intersection of 4455 and Brun Brunswick Road. Right, well, there is there is some federal funds though. Just the, yeah, meaning though the state is delivering. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Um, the FTA program. I just want to say briefly and not leave it out. Um, we have thirty three point one million programs. The majority of this, just about sixty percent, goes to the de designated recipient of Ulster County and Ulster County Area Transit. But a large proportion, uh, just um, over 50% goes to what we call capital cost of contracting. I think most of us are familiar with that process. That's where we essentially pass through funds to private transit carriers to provide transit and commuter services within the Mid-Hudson region. So that's a significant investment um, in public transit uh, in the region. And at this point in time, that um, FTA contract with NISDOT is still open. Uh, I don't believe it's been awarded in the past. It has been awarded to Adirondack Trailways. So we're awaiting further instructions and announcements from New York State DOT um, uh, regarding how that will be administered going forward. But it is a significant amount of money on our tip. And then as Sandra indicated, there's also maintenance funding that goes uh, to New York State DOT, and they have designated um, a portion of that for use um, within Ulster County. But these go to a wide variety of where and when activities uh, across uh, Mid Hudson South and Region 8 that includes uh, safety, landscaping, guide rail, bridge washing, um, geotech and crash investigation, the wide variety of uh, needs required to maintain our existing transportation system that New York State DOT is responsible for. These are in fact the multi-county process. Exactly. Well, right. and they also are, you know, at last month's um, meeting, we talked about how our approach is really preservation first. So our, our program is very, very heavy um, preservation, rehabilitation, not necessarily new renewal type construction, but I think we did catch some of those on the news. Mm -hmm. So all these projects are then combined into one master fiscal constraint table. And this is what we use to prove to our friends at the Federal Highway Administration, Federal Transit Administration, that this is a fiscally constrained tip. I apologize for the font size. This is included in the uh, printed report as well that's online. But by year, it's showing what our allocations are, what has been programmed in Ulster County, uh, in the Ulster County planning area, and we are achieving a fiscally constrained transportation improvement program. We didn't need one project out there. Right, and, and that's something, Senator, I'm not sure if Nicole had mentioned to you, um, in order to, and it doesn't really affect the four-year or five-year fiscal constraint program, but we did move County Routes uh, 7 and 8 shoulders from 2023 to 24 to give the uh, overall um, tip a little more breathing room in 2023. Yeah, and I think another important thing to note is on this table, you'll see the three green fun sources. Right, those are the National Highway Performance Program, Safety Improvement Program, and the National Highway Freight Program. Yeah. And you'll notice that the anticipated federal funding number um, is significantly higher than the program. And that's because that is basically shows how much we put the federal funds into the Hudson Valley, and then the program amount is how much we plan on making sure it gets spent in Ulster County under that, that program. Right, and, um, and that corresponds directly to this chart. One other um, item of note that is a requirement of the TIP is to um, include an assessment of projects completed during the previous TIP iteration. So that would be the current TIP. And I think it's really important to highlight some of these projects. So we called some of them out 
Um, as shown here, there's a full listing in the table um, on the right table one major projects completed, but I just wanted to highlight what some of those projects actually look like. So the, we're talking about the I-587 project at Broadway, which was a New York State DOT project um, that also included local funds for underground infrastructure uh, modernization. That is the $12 million project. The Midtown Linear Park, which is anticipated for completion later this summer in the city of Kingston. The Ward Street Bridge Rehabilitation Project, which is currently underway, I'm including that as completed. It's not scheduled for com construction completion until next year, but those funds are obligated. Uh, they were successfully obligated and construction is underway. Um, that is a major investment by the New York State DOT in that historic uh, bridge. The Broadway Streetscape Enhancements Project is another successful project completed. Here's a New York State DOT Route 28 in, um, um, thank you, Mount Tremper, um, which was a, a project that in, included a major resiliency uh, aspect to it, lifting the bridge. I believe it was uh, increasing its height by somewhere in the order of eight feet and length. Uh, yeah, lengthening it significantly as well to make it um, uh, much more resistant to recurring flooding and also widening the floodplain in the area as well. That's right. I think they, they moved the pier out of the major uh, flow area. Yeah. And while we have not included, Ulster County Area Transit has managed to purchase three uh, battery electric buses uh, during, I think, last uh, fiscal year they were purchased. Those were purchased using other funding sources other than federal funds. But as the previous resolution uh, during the meeting indicated, we will be using our federal funds going forward for modernization of the UCAT fleet and working toward the goal of full electrification. So thank you to all of our project sponsors in the past several years who have moved these projects forward to successful completion. Um, key benchmarks going forward. So today's June 28th, wow, June's already over. Um, it flew right by. Um, this program requires approval from the technical co committee and then the TIP is required to be released for 15 day public comment period. Um, we have earmarked that um, uh, comment period to begin on July 2nd. That's next uh, a week from today. July 13 is our public meeting that will be held at the um, Ulster County offices at um, 244 Fair Street in the legislative chambers on the sixth floor. That is a 6 p.m. meeting. We will also broadcast that via Zoom. And uh, the public comment period will then close on July 15th. And then the UCTC policy committee will be required to give final approval after reviewing any public comments received. The new tip will then become effective on October 1st. Now, Brian, does the new tip become official really when the tip is approved? I, I'm just, you know, we should look into that and keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just something to think about is it may be the, the tip has to be approved in order for us to start. Well, the old tip has to go away. On the yeah, this is a that would be my next statement. <laughs> right. So keep in mind that your new tip really you, you start obligating off your new tip. I'm pretty sure once the tip is approved. Okay. And they are talking about the tip potentially being delayed in approval. For November. Yeah. Yeah. So what we're doing in our office, and we can do that with you, is we'll take a look at um what's in the existing tip make sure if there was anything late in this year that you wanted to obligate that you're worried about you might want to make sure that it's <clears throat> you know we'll have to look at that because you i don't think you'll have any construction projects <clears throat> caught up in this that was the trail is the one that i'm really worried about okay there's so two or three sure. there's wilbur ave in kingston which okay. is a small paving yes. project there's Henry W. Du Bois, which I believe is really close to getting their bid documents ready, and the Kingston Rail Trail as well. Those are three I'm aware of. Okay. They're close. Okay. We'll send you a note on that. How's that work? Yes. Okay. Yes. We'll, we'll, and we'll work with you to make sure that you're covered in, in both scenarios. Like, where's the best place for it? You know, okay. 
Um, you just want to make sure that it's obviously it's in a new one, which is great. You don't want to necessarily change that, but let's look at the existing one. Got it. Ed. Yeah, it's a, is it? Yeah, what's in the. Oh, I'm sorry, it should be July 5th. July 5th, yeah. And then that would mean July 20th. The yeah, public I was going to say it's a little, little bit different. It's, yep, sorry. It, it's correct in your in your committee meeting notes. It's correct in the notes. Thank you, Ed. Yeah. And we will provide public notice that will go out through our distribution list regarding the availability of this document for review. Um, we're now on version two, which, um, sorry, so questions can be submitted to any of us at the UCTC. Where's that listed in the project listings in the appendix? Oh, okay, got it. Yeah, I got a new keyboard, Ed, so I keep having <laughs> playing it on the keyboard. Yeah, that's true. It's wasn't like David yeah. knows this will drive me crazy. Uh, yeah. So I, I yeah, just a, in conclusion, that the full tip is available through the UCTC website. Please take a look at it. That's version one. We're now on well into version two and are making uh, updates and changes as we receive them. Thank you, Ed. If you have any comments, especially for project sponsors, they need to be submitted to us uh, in very short order so that if there are any additional changes to schedules or costs, we need to be made aware with them and have that discussion. Um, otherwise, the tip document narrative is also available for your review. Thank you. So I have a motion and I have a second. And in order for us to move forward to the public comment period, we need the Transportation Council uh, uh, Technical Committee to adopt the uh, adopt the resolution to move them forward to the so policy committee. With a referral to the policy committee. Policy committee. Yeah, there it is. So I'll make that motion. No, so we have a motion oh, and a no. second. Uh, my understanding is, yeah, we do. Mr. List and Mr. Biden, motion and second. So any additional discussion? Brian, the, the projects that are committed, are, are there, are most of them following the schedule and they're moving forward? I know last year, I remember we had the discussion over some that were just sort of sitting there not making progress. And we had those discussions about whether we continue that or not. Is yeah, we have touched base with every local project sponsor, um, including those that maybe have been wallowing a little bit and made them fully aware that with this commitment of additional funds is an understanding that these projects need to be delivered. Um, our tip is unusual in that it's front loaded in federal fiscal years 23 and 24. That's almost all of our highway projects right now are in those federal fiscal years. Um, most of these projects are close and so they really just need to get across the finish line. And they have been given substantial additional funds um, in order to do that. So we'll be keeping a very close eye. And I'll be personally asking for routine updates um, to make sure that these projects, that the local sponsors are keeping their consultants um, up to speed and these projects are staying up to schedule. So in theory, next step update. We would be mm -hmm. able to do a call for projects in theory. Yeah. <laughs> they always in theory. Any additional comments, questions? Hearing none, any opposed? Any abstentions? So carried. Thank you. Item six on the agenda, other old business, Ulster County Traffic Safety Board. Uh, the Traffic Safety Board will not be meeting in July. That meeting falls on July 4th. The board meets the first Monday of every month. We will defer until August. I would encourage members that are interested in traffic safety to uh, please attend. Our, uh, if you're interested, check out the Safety Board's website uh, to see what our agenda items have been and what might be forthcoming. We're focusing now on developing a work plan to help guide uh, activities. Some of the focus areas will also include 
trans, uh, traffic safety advocacy and education. I'm looking at Kingston. City of Kingston has a new um, program called Be a Road Hero. There's placards all over the city of Kingston that are advertising this message on how people can uh, be a hero while operating their vehicles and using our public si uh, highway system. So I would encourage people to check that out. <laughs> and uh, there'll be other activities as well. Um, you want to talk a little bit about that dashboard we found? Be my guest. I've been doing a lot of talking already. Okay. Um, so the other thing we, we, we have discovered is, is that there is a, a dashboard out there that has crash data on it that's available through the police departments. That's the uh, New York State Association of Police Chiefs. Yeah. And so we're looking at that dashboard that's out there. There's, it looks like there's one year of data on it. And, and I know Dave is working on to see if the MPO uh, can tap in and use use that dashboard or develop its own dashboard to try to make some of this crash data available publicly uh, and also to give everyone an opportunity to to do some work on that crash on that crash data that's not just the number of crashes but also looks at other data associated with crashes so that we can understand what the crash data means in terms of uh, an appropriate response so just be aware that that's out there and, and we were Quite surprised to find out that there was a dashboard that we didn't know about that was out there through the police department, through the, uh, the, the what is it, the, the sheriff chief, police chiefs association? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah if you want to um, share that with us too, because we have the task data that we get from the state police too. Yeah, it might be helpful for them. If we saw it, we could maybe share some of our, you know, because we're used to you, looking at that data. Do you, do you have a share? Do you have a, uh, I mean, this is a this is a whole built up dashboard has yeah, filters on it and everything. That's why I'm kind it's very of weird. Interested in seeing it compared to what system we use. Okay. We have a system. Um, I've used it a few times, um, but you know we're able to put a re request into the system and then it sends us all the accident data, the reports, and then we do exactly what you're saying. We look at we look for trends. In accident sites over like a three year period. And I would just be interested to see what you guys found. Okay. Yeah. It, it's a very, what we found is, is it, it's not a sophisticated system, but it, the, we're, we're, the thing that we're seeing is that there's been a push, I think, generally uh, statewide and certainly nationally mm -hmm. to sort of get this data out yeah. there so the public can see it. Um, and so we've been having an internal discussion, and as part of that dis internal discussion, and Brian's work with the Traffic Safety Board, we uncovered this, the fact that there well, is this. The is very data driven. Mm -hmm. And I know with our system, we have good data for the state highway system. So if the data you're calling in goes beyond the state highway system, it looks like that it would be a Yeah, it looks like it does. Yeah, I believe it was developed through a grant um, to the association from the Governor's Traffic Safety Board, but it seems to me duplicative because we already have the accident location information system, which is about to be turned into, what's the new system called? Clear. The, clear. the new one should be rolling out right. next month. And that's what, I mean, it uses the same sources of DMV, NV 104 yes. data. And it was my understanding that if you're a municipal um, agency, mm -hmm. you could always request Absolutely. access to oh, the Alice system. Oh, right, that's yeah, the name of the one I think I'm familiar right. with. Yeah, right. Yeah, and David's very familiar oh, with that system. Yes. Oh, that's There's this, we so. used it, relied on that heavily when we did our countywide road safety assessment work, which mm -hmm. take, took a look beyond just one year and where crashes were located and factored in the severity of crashes and the volume of traffic on the roadways to give yourself a crash rate. Mm -hmm. Rather than the sheriff's one is just an inventory, but you can filter by the criteria. So we're gonna be looking to create a dashboard which makes the data available as well as the work from the um, county uh, the countywide road safety plan a little bit more accessible and dynamic. Right, so this new dashboard that they, I, as far as I'm aware, it's, it's really only intended for use by the police agencies. It's but not so publicly little, available. Right, it's not publicly available. Yeah. And it's intended to be a little more user-friendly. 
I, I, it's not really clear to me why it was developed the way it was. So, it, it, what it did was is looking internally the discussions we've been having is literally how to make some of this data more accessible to the public, a and more accessible to decision makers so that they understand what the data that they're looking at, which sort of led us on this search, which which unveiled this fact that there was this dashboard out there. I don't think it's something that we want to um, sort of copy, but it is something that we, we found that was out there. And what we're looking at now is, is making a dashboard that is more sophisticated because we do get a lot of requests. Well, there's a lot of accidents on my street. Mm -hmm. you know, so those are the other things that's out there. The other thing that we're, we're talking about is um, putting money in the budget so that the traffic safety board can have a, a speed feedback trailer mm -hmm. that it can deploy. Uh, so that it's responding not only with respect to what the police departments want, but also in terms of some of the public requests come in to the MPO and to the traffic safety board itself, in terms of there's things that are happening on my street that I want to see um, a response to. And what that would do is it would allow us to essentially go out, deploy the trailer and get the feedback from that to see whether there's anything that's happening out there, or it's or or it's more of a perception versus a reality. Any questions on that? Project updates, Brian. The main project we have under contract right now is the transportation vulnerability assessment, and I look forward to providing a, a full update and perhaps a presentation during the uh, next UCTC policy committee meeting that project is moving forward. Um, other, otherwise, we have under contract um, the 9W uh, corridor management plan for the town of Ulster. And I plan on pulling together our technical advisory committee uh, for that uh, project. Um, I need to send out that email today. And that will be looking at 9W um, during the, through, throughout the largely commercial district in the town of Ulster. And we have uh, Creighton Manning engineers under contract to assist us with that. And uh, New York State DOT will be a project partner on that as well uh, through the uh, local resident engineer. And then moving forward, we have several pro projects that we have in the hopper. Yeah, we're currently negotiating with um, a, uh, a firm right now for our rail safety study uh, in the city of Kingston. So we'll see how that goes. It came in significantly over budget. Uh, and so we're, we're having a conversation with um, the uh, consulting firm in terms, of, in terms of moving that project forward. But looking toward this fall, it's been a very busy spring and summer with the update of the tip. It's usually a pretty big lift and this year was no different for our staff, um, but we'll look to be adding um, some new projects for consideration uh, this fall. Uh, there are, those would be projects currently programmed on the Unified Planning Work Program. Dave, can you update us on traffic count? Yeah, we've had two sets of traffic counts go out. We're looking to get a, a third set that, that goes out. And these are counts that we use to supplement the, the New York State program and get counts in areas uh, that we need. And they're typically a little bit more on the local system. Uh, so we're right now setting up to get some camera counts for turning movement and classification counts as well. Um, but I think we still have some uh, you know, tube counters that we'll be putting out to round out our program. Anything from the council members? Hearing none, um, everybody have a uh, safe and, and an enjoyable 4th of July. Um, and I'd ask that we adjourn in honor of Bernard Benjamin. I will make that motion. Thank you, Mr. Litz. Mr. Baden seconds. Thank everyone. Have a great summer. Hi. Thank you. Take care. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, he came. Yeah. yeah he was always very nice and he just could talk.
Vernon is a he's a, he's a good soul. He's a good soul. Unexpected. He had a very aggressive form. Yeah. Of